If you've been in the world of productivity and time management for any length of time, you will have discovered that time is the only fixed asset that you have. There's 24 hours each day. The one area that you don't really have that much control over is the tasks that you have to do each day. Now, unless you live a nomadic life and have no family, no friends, no job, and you don't interact with any other human being, you may be able to control the number of tasks coming at you each day. Essentially, all you really have to worry about is staying safe and finding food. Two tasks. But that's not most of us. Most of us have jobs, most of us have family, most of us have friends, and they are tremendous amount of pressure on that one fixed resource you have each day. Now, I've been thinking about a way that I could demonstrate this to you. So, I've come up with a simple su suggestion. Let me take this laundry basket. Well, this is actually my laundry basket. Now, if I open up the laundry basket, and I've got a beautifully planned day. You can probably see my beautifully laid out navy blue t-shirts. I have a thing for navy blue t-shirts. Now that's great, that's my day planned. There's plenty of flexibility, there's time, I can close the lid, there's lots of space in there. That takes up probably about half of my awake time. But that's not how life really works. That would be the ideal. The trouble is, we then start interacting with customers, our bosses, and our colleagues. So then we start getting an email. We get a message that suddenly means we have to send an Excel file. And then now we've got our boss asking us to do this, and our boss asking us to do that. Suddenly, this is now beginning to fill up, and that time is getting, you know, a little bit sort of squeezed a bit. But that's not all. Because now, we, uh, we've got meetings to attend, and there's another task, and another meeting with another task, and then another meeting, and another task. Oh, and then there's that email from that client who desperately needs that proposal now, and then we've got our colleague saying, can you help me, please, can you help me? Now, well, we can just about close the day. We may have to do about 20 minutes extra work towards the end of the day, or perhaps we need to skip our lunch time, but you know, not too bad. But it doesn't end there, does it? No, because now when we finish work, we get a message from our spouse, our partner or whatever, and saying, can you pick something up on the way home? And oh, can you call into the DIY store? And now it's more and more, and now you can't close the lid. You know, your day screwed. This is all you've got with the lid shut. And yet what we're trying to do is to do this. It's not gonna work, but there is a better way. So let's move this out of the way. The solution comes in two little parts. The first part is to categorize the different types of things you have to do each day. Now, work is generally quite easy. We're employed to do something. A salesperson is employed to sell. A teacher is employed to teach, for example. So it's pretty easy to work out what our core work is when we have those kind of jobs. You know, anything related to making a sale is gonna be a pretty important part of your job. Similarly with a teacher, anything related to teaching a class to your students is going to be pretty important. So that is going to be a category. Now this is what it's all about, is categorizing the different types of things that you need to do on a daily or weekly or monthly basis. And now there are two common categories that we all share one of which is going to be communications, another one is going to be admin, and probably a third would be core, uh, what I would describe as chores. You know, doing a little bit of housework, I do the dishes, I, you know, I clean my coffee pot at the end of the morning when I finish drinking coffee. These are chores, and they can be done in between little bits and sessions of work. Now, I'm essentially a content creator and a coach. So I've got clients to deal with. I was looking at my client list the other day and there's about 300 clients in my client list. So that's gonna keep me busy a lot of the day. I create courses and those courses do take quite a long time to do, pretty much 48 hours per course. And then I've got my regular content creating work. But what I've done is I've broken it down into writing, audio visual, and projects. Those are kind of like my core work as well as my you know, communications and admin. 
Now, writing takes up a lot of my day. I write books, I write blog posts, I write newsletters. That's going to happen every day. I suppose that's part of my core work. So the question that you want to be asking yourself is, what is your core work? What are you actually employed to do? And what does that look like at a task level? You can then assign it a category. So as you can see here in my Todoist, I've assigned my category of writing, and these are all the things that I need to write today, or certainly within the next 24 hours. I have audio-visual, which is what I'm doing right now. I am recording videos. That's an a visual part of my work. So I categorize all my work. The next part involves your calendar. Now, once you know what your categories are, it's pretty easy to figure out how much time you need each week to work on those different categories. So I have about six hours for writing each week. I have about 15 hours to 18 hours set aside for meetings and coaching calls. And I've got plenty of time to do my audio visual work and everything else. I start my week off knowing that I've got that time protected. Now, I'm pretty lucky because I am be very disciplined and I've learned the art of saying no. I will say no if necessary in order to get my core work done. Because if I don't do that, if I was employed by somebody, I'd be fired because I'm not doing my work. But essentially, what you'll notice here, particularly on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, there are gaps in my calendar. There's a two hour gap where I've got space to deal with all the unknown tasks, you know, the things that are pretty much, apart from my plan day, are filling up my list. I've got two hours each day for dealing with that. I'm also not adverse to doing a little bit of work in the evening if I need to, to avoid a massive backlog. But that's rare, very rare indeed. But what I'm looking for is protecting the time to do my core work means that I can use the categories in my Todoist, i.e. the labels that I use, and say, right, this morning it's two hours of writing. What are my writing tasks? I don't need to worry about anything else. I won't check email for that two hours either, and I'm certainly not checking messages. People can wait two hours, it's not that long. And also, if people are expecting instant replies to their messages and emails from you, that's something that you probably need to look at and perhaps consider training people a little bit in order to, ex to lower their expectations in terms of how you will come back. But that is entirely up to you. If you're not comfortable with protecting two hours, then protect just an hour. It's amazing what you can get done in an hour a day. That's five hours a week. That's actually a lot of time to get a lot of your focus work done. And it's one hour out of, say, a typical eight hour day, working day. That means you're seven hours you're available for other people. Personally, I think that's a bit too much. I'm trying to move to a 50-50. I think 50-50 is actually very good. Let's say I work a typical eight hour day. 50% of that time, i.e. four hours, is I'm available for everybody and anybody, but four hours is protected for my work, the work that needs to be done. Now, I know this is hard. I know people find it very, very difficult to, to actually shift away from what I describe as a task based productivity system to a more time-based productivity system. But if you're stressed out, if you're anxious, if you're just feeling worn out by the number of tasks that keep coming at you, it's really the only option you've got if you want a less stressful and anxious life. There is no other way because those tasks will never stop. And it's something if you're employed or even if you run your own business, you don't have much control over what's going to come at you on a daily basis. The only thing you have control over is your time and how you use that time. I would suggest that the best thing you could do is start moving yourself to a more time-based productivity system so that you are in control over when and how you're doing your work. Just before we finish, I would say that I have an hour a day set aside for communication. I've been doing this now for 10 years. And what it means is I move all my, my email tasks, for example, to doing it between 4 and 5 p.m. every day. I've been doing this for 10 years. I have not had a backlog of email ever since I started that system. It works. It's brilliant. 
And if you want to learn more about my email system, then this video up here would be the right one to watch next.